Hip-Hops is 1987.com. Hip Hop is 1987, Terrell Thomas. We're here in Atlanta right now. And you may recognize this beautiful young lady that I'm here with. Her face has been all over the TV and big screen for some time. And we're here to talk about some things she got going on. Her name is Crystal Wilson. How you doing today, ma'am? Give me this mic. I always take the mic for people who pronounce my name wrong. It's Crystal Wilson. <laughs> uh, and he's talking about hip hop since 1987. You was born in 1987. I was born a little, a little, a little bit before 87. <laughs> no. a, little, a little bit before 87. <laughs> Hi everybody. But here, I'll give you a mic back. I'll let you have it. Let you. Have it. No, it's, it's a pleasure to be here with you. As, as I as I gave mention to you, definitely been doing your thing on the big screen for a long time. And one, you're you're also kind of a, I'll say an urban icon for the film The Players Club. Yes, Not right. only did you come up mm -hmm. in that film, Ice Cube produced and and was in the film. You also had Bernie Mac, Jamie mm -hmm. Foxx. There was a lot of urban talent that came out of that film so before we talk about what you got going on in the present day let's talk about your history and talk to me about the players club and give me some of the memories when you were filming that movie oh my goodness um from well that movie i mean of course like you said it's a cult classic you know what i'm saying i enjoyed making it of course but i was very nervous because i was the only person that was cast from atlanta you know a lot of people auditioned i remember when i went to la for my third audition with ice cube it was people in the room like um, Robin Givens even going out for this part. It did, not for the part of Ronnie, but for a role in this okay. film. Um, Sally Richardson, just some people that had, you know, A-list actresses who were hot in the business at the time. And that's who I was going up against. So I just, you know, had some heavy people that I was, you know, in the room with. And just feeling kind of nervous about that whole process and just thinking, I'm not going to get this. Like, I'm just, you know, I'm just here probably just for the sake of them saying, okay, we did go to Atlanta. We did have this mass um, call, um, casting call. So we just, you know, for the sake of the good faith, we're going to have her come out. But um, interesting enough, they said, okay, look, we want... Um, a Ronnie to get with a, a Diamond and an Ebony and everybody to come in together collectively as a group and read. Mm -hmm. So you guys kind of select each other. In L.A., it's a little cliquish, you know. And so everybody just kind of migrated toward, towards somebody. And I remember sitting there by myself like, damn, I mean, nobody going to... Try to even read with me, like you know. And so Monica Calhoun came over to me and was like, "Do you have somebody to read with you?" And I said, "I I don't." So she said, "Well, I'm gonna read with you, and then I'm gonna find us a diamond." And she went and got Lisa Frank. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, and so the rest is history. When you guys were on set and you were making that film, did you ever at once think to yourself like, "Wow, you know, I'll be working with all these legends, or the film would even be as big as it became"? No, I was so damn nervous the whole time. I probably was that I didn't even have clear vision until it was over. No, no, I was really I I was so focused on doing a great job. Um, I just always respected Cube. I respected him as a rapper because that's initially what my first love was. I respect that. Yeah, I really love. I'm 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 still a hip hop head. I said I got Thug Life tatted on my chest. I think all kinds <laughs> of stuff. I think like Jay Z's my alter ego. I just got all these things in my mind about my rap career that never happened. But I just respected him so much as a rapper that for him to select me to play in his first directorial debut, um, I just said, I got to kill it. You know, I can't I can't go in and half step and half do. And me being from Atlanta and it being about strip clubs out of Atlanta, I was like, I got to represent for the script. was like, I can't, I, you know, so it just, it just worked out. And I, I went in with that attitude and just saying, I'm just going to try to give it this best feel and and uh, you know for the, nobody was doing no lesbian nobody was saying mm -hmm. they were a stripper so it was just a, a risk that i took and i've just been that person all my life i take risks i like to blaze trails i don't have a problem with it i'm up for the challenge and um i'm just glad that cube gave me opportunity to do it uh, that was actually well said and, and it brings up my next question because a lot of folks actually they do look at you as the original vixen you know you were at the beginning and the strip club culture was big here in Atlanta as you gave mention to in nine, in the early 90s yeah. up until 98 when the Players Club was released but it didn't have as big a, a national appeal as it does now it was almost like a, a culture was spawned <laughs> after, after the Players Club film came out right. you know so you know you have the IG models now you have the different video vixens and things of that nature what do you think of women's current role in hip hop today and how they're portrayed you know, the thing is, I, some, gosh, it's, that, it's such a big uh, thing to just kind of answer in that, like, really a condensed question because, 
you know, I have several thoughts on it. I, I just wish that more people would do the work, I think, because they just think um, a lot of times that they have a lot of followers and they have a lot of likes and all of that, that that makes, that makes them famous or that makes them worthy of being on the big screen or, or, or having putting an album out or what have you. But they really haven't done the work, so you don't really have a respect for the craft. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's missing a lot. So I'm not, I don't have a problem with anybody making it because, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's so many things that go into you really getting a break because there's people out there that are phenomenal that you never see, you know, and then there's people out there that's mediocre that you see all the time. Yeah, yeah. So it's nothing, it's, it's nothing to say, like, I'm not going to, I'm always going to respect the check, but respect the craft, do your work. If you get that opportunity, don't just blow that opportunity or don't just get in front of the camera because, you know, you got a fat ass, like do the work and, and give us something phenomenal like don't don't come in with mediocrity <laughs> well so once again now not only did you have a wonderful career after the players club you moved on to bigger and better things you're also an author and i know that you're a heavy book reader you, you love books and you it. love writing as well talk to me about when you got into writing and when you be, began to find a love of reading um, I, I loved writing since I was a little girl. Like, I used to always write crazy stuff. My mom was like, okay, I'm going to need you to get out of Never Never Land and be here on Earth. So, I just loved writing forever because I think that it gives you a door into just different things. You know, it just opens you up to so much um, and, to, and to read as well, you know. And I think that, that the love of that just has propelled me and made me be able to, to kind of segue my my career in different ways not just in front of the camera so therefore when people be like oh man she fell off where she been i ain't seen her you ain't seen me but georgia powell seen me on my checks coming in i'm paying my bills on my you know so i've been able to sustain i'm not one that you're not going to be able to say you've seen somebody come repose that's my car or is anything like that because I, I live within my means i have a really good um core um understanding and knowledge of what it takes to survive and I think that just comes from be open, opening the book you know what I'm saying and reading and knowing things and, and opening yourself up to more than just you know your social media <laughs> now you got a lot of big things that are actually going on right now you have yeah. a new reality show that'll be coming out very soon talk to me about the title and how everything actually came about you doing the oh, show God. And I, <laughs> so the show is called From the Bottom Up and it is produced by someone else that I really admire um, Queen Latifah is on board Flavor Unit and um, I remember back in the day I was trying to get her to manage me oh okay. <laughs> but um and also Nikki Gilbert who did the, no. the creator of R&B Divas who is a good great friend of mine and what I want to say is nobody that's on this show was cast on this show nothing was accidental about this show like we like Nikki once again is a person who does the work she really watched Every woman, she really went and, and, and delved into each of our lives and said, okay, I want this person for this reason. I want this person for this reason. Because it is a show about um, us supporting each other through crises that have happened in our lives. Um, you know, and don't don't get me wrong. It's not it's not like kumbaya. It's not like, you know, that the whole time. Because, of course, we as women... And we're emotional creatures. So you're going to get that. You're going to get that drama. You're going to get us a little bit of cattiness because that comes with the territory. But ultimately, our goal is to uplift each other, work through some really kind of trying times that we've been through. Um, you know, we, for everything, we, we're addressing current issues today. Um, one, Kim Smelly, who is has said, you know, she was arrested for doing the illegal butt injections. Then we got Christine Beasley, who was um, with the Detroit mayor, now that we had a presidential election up, coming up. And just to show how, when you select to be in politics, you give up so much because you are under a microscope of scrutiny. You can't do anything wrong. I, it's easier for me to come back from scandal because I'm an actress. I'm in the entertainment world, but in politics, it's very tough. And I, and I feel so bad for her because she's she's brilliant. So she deserves a second chance. So this it's a story about that and us coming back. But I think men should really tune in because I think if they watch it, they'll see how they can interact differently with their sisters, with their wives, with their partners, their mothers, and just how things affect us, you know, but what you guys do sometimes. So it's, it's a really dope show. I'm really excited about it. Where was the uh, majority of the show filmed? Was it filmed here in Atlanta? Or did you have to travel to the West Coast and get it done? Um, they did. Um, they filmed it here mostly in Atlanta, but they did get some shots in, in Detroit because okay. Sarah Stokes from Making the Band, she's... Um, 
she's on the show. And she's, you know, she's also, she's just a ph phenomenal woman. I call her our little boo-boo kitty of the show because she's young. Um, and she's been in a relationship for a super long time. And it just shows how her kids are affected by a lot of, you know, choices and things that are made. So um, they did do some shooting in Detroit as well and here in Atlanta. Now, outside of doing a reality show, do you have any films that you're working on producing or that you'll be starring in anytime soon? I actually just had a film that came out as a franchise. Um, this this past year was A Baby for Christmas. Our first one was Marry Me for Christmas. The second one was uh, Marry Us for Christmas. And then this year, it was A Baby for Christmas. Oh. So we're really working on trying to get a, a sitcom out of that. And so the network is really, you know, pushing for that. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I love playing the character Elizabeth. She's fun. She's funny. I call her like the uh, Blanche Devereaux who was on, <laughs> on Golden Girls, you know. So um, that's one thing. Another thing is I, I'm, I have so many projects in the pipeline, and I'm just working on getting the financing for them. One is called Greenwood Avenue, and it's about the Black Wall Street, which is a true story. Mm, okay, I'm well aware you of Black know? Wall Street. So, and so it's dope. really <laughs> so dope, and we've written this, like the pilot, like we just written this series, and it's like Boardwalk Empire almost. Okay. So it, it's it's going to give you some history, but it's also going to keep you captivated. That is extremely yeah. dope. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's so, and we've had some major interest in it, um, um, but it's like, it's hard to get those stories told in Hollywood. It's very that. difficult because they want you to, you know, put out the Pootie Tangs. But instead, you know, really, you know, they want you to put out these movies, Pootie Tang or CB4 or something like that. They're not, they're not really putting the money into, um, histor historical things that we could talk about. So we're fighting that battle. And don't get me wrong, like, oh, let me say this. Cause like straight out of Compton, like I can see we doing quality stuff like that. That's. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Put our money into stuff like that, biopics and things of that nature. So I'm writing. Um, I have my book, Sex Appease. I'm going to have a follow-up called My Poetic Palette. Okay. So, yeah, I'm, you know, just got some stuff up. Up my sleeve. <laughs> where, where can, when actually can folks check out the show? Let them know where they can tune in and when they can check it out. You can see the show every Saturday on Centric um, at 10 p.m. Standard Eastern Eastern Standard Time. See, I practice <laughs> this, and then then not say that, but um, but every Saturday on Centric, okay, at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> Before we go, I, I I gotta ask you this, just kind of to give a message to our younger viewers. As you gave mention to, you've been in the game for some time, and you've been able to sustain not only. Uh, a wonderful reputation you've grown in the industry as well. But could you give advice to some young African American men and women just on how to stay relevant in the entertainment world or how to stay true to themselves? Um, I think that, you know, the thing that I say this works for me because it's hard to give advice because I'm always learning. So I don't really like to just say, you got to do this, you got to do that. There's, there's really no key formula except for, I say, I just have to be able to get up and look at myself in the mirror every day. If I'm able to look at myself in the mirror and feel like, hey, I feel good about who I see on the other side of that, then I'm I'm moving in the right direction. If I look in the mirror and I say, okay, you know what, I, I, I can't face myself. I did something that I'm not so proud of and that I feel like, you know, I'm ashamed of, then you gotta you gotta check that. So because sometimes in this industry, People feel like they have to compromise themselves to make it. And you really, really don't. You know, and, and it's like, I haven't. I haven't. And you may not see me on everything, but you see me. <laughs> you know, I'm there. And I'm like, you never know. Um, I was saying this a lot of people in the industry. We don't know that they're falling apart until we've lost them. Because mm -hmm. they're trying to... You know, they're trying to, you know what I'm saying? It's it's true. It's like, you know, you like, oh, dang, you know, what happened to them? And then next thing you know, they've overdosed or they've done something crazy because we put such pressure on how somebody should look or how some how often you should see somebody or what somebody should be doing. And I'm not going to, I've never succumbed to the pressures of the world. I only, I, the only person I have to impress is God and myself. That's it. You do that first and then you worry about everybody else. And that what. <laughs> Mama D in that order. <laughs> How do good people know where they can pick up your book? They can pick up my book at www.crystal c h r y s t a l e wilson y'all can spell that dot com. So that's www.crystalwilson.com.
And if they want to stay in tune with everything you got going on via social media, how would they be able to do that? So that is um, Instagram is at Crystal the Prototype. And Twitter, it is Crystal Pro. See, I'm putting pro on everything because they took like the real the actress. That they say. <laughs> I, I mean, I couldn't even get my own page or my own name. So I said, okay, I'll just be the pro, the prototype, the first, the model that all that other stuff was made after. <laughs> Hip Hop is 1987, your man Terrell Thomas live in the A with the beautiful Miss Crystal Wilson. Make sure you check out her show and everything she's got going on. Stay tuned to Hip Hop is 1987 because we'll have a lot more from this beautiful lady. Film Players Club in 1987. No, I'm just <laughs>